Welcome home. This is the Irish Roots Cafe where every day's a holiday and there's always room for one more. Come right this way. Have a seat with me today in the corner booth. We've got an empty house today. The door's just shut. Sweeney bar that door. Molly put on another cup of coffee. Let's get this show on the road. We're celebrating our 49th week now, and I'm Michael Laughlin, your host. You can reach me on my webpage at irishroots.com, where you can check out the written notes on my blog and search all three of our podcasts by typing in any search term. Yes, it's just another free service from the Irish Roots Cafe. Now be sure to tune in to our sister podcasts, or would I have a sister podcast and a brother podcast now that we have three? That's an interesting question. I would want to be politically correct, but our uh, first sister podcast was the History of the Irish in America series, and last week we talked with Randy Jordan, and I asked him about what it was like being married to an Irish woman and how he found things when he moved to County Cork, Ireland with his bride. He covered everything, including food and drink, and we also interviewed uh, Maeve O'Malley, a native of Ireland in the U.S., and compared notes with her thoughts on the USA. And now we've launched our third broadcast series, our second sister podcast, I think we'll say today, and this one is on Irish song and recitation. It is live on our webpage now, the first introductory episode, and that's really just an announcement. And I think I'll play a bit of that announcement for you now so you get an idea of what's going on. Uh, this is actually uh, uh, written down as our first episode. It's just sort of an introduction to give you an idea of what we're up to and what we're looking for and what it's all about. So be sure to subscribe to all three to stay in touch if you'd like it. And why is that? Because every day's a holiday at the Irish Roots Cafe. Now let's listen in to uh, that excerpt from the first ever Irish Song and Recitation Podcast. The Irish Song and Recitation Festival, home of songs, sayings, and poetical proverbs. You are at the Irish Roots Cafe, and I am Mick the Bridge, your host. Oro Shedavahawala. We invite you in to share with us today. How can you accomplish that goal? The rules are simple, just listen in. One, pick your favorite old song or recitation. Two, call me at 816 256 3360. Speak or sing it clearly right into my phone recorder. And tell us anything about it or about you that might be of interest. It's just that easy. Oh, yes, and if you're shy, you can use a stage name. And yes, all entries can be played on the air here, and we retain the full right to do so. No, you'll not make any money for your troubles. It's all for free, and it's all for fun. Going on for four years now, this marks the first time the festival has ever been recorded. And you might want to know what the categories are so you know which might be proper for you to send in here now. What you, what you decide to submit could be a 1,000 years old. That's just fine. Our categories for submission are songs of the Irish worldwide, storytelling, poetic recitation, the history of the Irish worldwide, and solo instrumentation. Now, I well know it wouldn't do to call for volunteers without kicking things off myself. So we're having the Grandmaster from last year, a very learned man, Mr. Peter Riley Adams, 
come in for several episodes to kick this whole thing off. We've discovered a bit of forgotten history and song that we're going to uncover for you. At least we're going to attempt to start that process. And we're going to tell you about some of the stories of Irish song in America, in earlier America. And that's intimately tied in with early minstrel shows, theater, vaudeville, and even Tin Pan Alley in the 1800s. What an era that was, folks. I hope we can come away knowing a little bit more than we came in with. And that leaves the door open for you to share anything you'd like from any country in the world, whether it be a story, a poem, or a song. And history is always welcome. We may alternate shows each week, so subscribe to all three if that suits you. Uh, you might consider participating by phone or, if you want to, by sending your recording in on an MP3. We can handle that easy enough. You can do that by mail or, or send it in on the web. Uh, next week, we'll all meet where the river Shannon flows. And remember, keep the best of your Irish heritage alive today. Well, that's the story on that, folks. Just thought I'd give you a peek into what we were doing. And now let's move on to our Irish Families podcast, which is what we are today. And among today's topics are the Irish Family Name of the Week, Kavanaugh. Families of County Galway is the Book of the Day. County Leitrim sources gathered in one place. Map developments in DNA and in Chicago. A family search for Tyrrell. The Celtic Lounge is launched. The last Kalali in Germany. And Griffin in Australia. A personal note from a descendant in search of family. Now let me see. Let's just go right to the book of the week. And that's the families of County Galway, Ireland. That's a hardbound book. I wrote that as part of the first seven books in the series, which are... Uh, uh, bigger with more pages and, and uh, really can contain more information. Uh, here's a sample extract from the book. I'll just give you a few notes, and it quotes Hardiman, who did a great history of Galway. If you're looking for books on Galway, the history of Galway by Hardiman, James Hardiman, I think it was, was really a good work. So that's one to put on your list. And in that work, he gives us the names of principal families, uh, fishing and on the lake and the bay of Galway and those who made short voyages along the coast. And they're given some time in the area after the 12th century Norman invasions. And they're found among the earliest families documented in the area. And the families of County Galway, Ireland, uh, records that as the family names are, and I bet you we've got more than one or two Galway families out there listening, but these original old Galway names are Athy, Brannigan, Blundell, Brunt, Burden, Kale, and perhaps that's a shortening of Cahill, I'm not sure, Coppinger, uh, Devlin, Farty, Freen, or Freehand, perhaps, LaFickle, Killery, or Killery, spelled K-I-L-L-E-R-Y, or K-I-L-L-O-R-Y, Kerwick, which also became Kerwin and is related to Kerwicken, uh, Lang, Lawless, Moylan, Munahan, Pinrise or Pinrice, Sage, Cancora, Valley or Wallen, or Wale maybe, uh, Verdon, Welder, and White. And of course, those aren't all the names of the families of County Galway, but those are the ones cited as old, old families, over a thousand years old in, in County Galway. And uh, they're tied up into Irish history for sure. And of course, uh, many of them were still to be found in the 19th century. And Hardiman said that Athy, Farty, Freehan, Killery, Kerwin, and Whites were still there in the 19th century and easily found. Well, that's enough of that extract, but that gives you an idea on County Galway. And I also remember reading that uh, in the Families of Galway book when I was writing it that uh, way back when they think there was an early Welsh settlement uh, 
in County Galway, so you're bound to have some Welsh blood there too. Oh, let me see. What have we got coming up now? Let's go to our member search list and some of uh, the folks who have uh, placed orders with us here in the last week. Can't mention everybody, but we always like to take a few just to keep a pulse of things. And we haven't had time to mention libraries yet, really, so I thought I'd mention some of the libraries who are taking our books and showing an active interest in the Irish heritage and Irish genealogy. So if you're in the area, it might be worth stopping by and checking it out. Uh, let me see. We've got the Mid-Continent Public Library in Independence, Missouri, and the Public Library of Cincinnati, Ohio, the Kansas City Public Library, the K. Linneman Branch Library in St. Louis, Missouri, and the Godfrey Memorial Library of Middletown, Connecticut. Be sure to patronize these uh, libraries, folks. They're on the ball, I think. And let me see. Let's have a gold member. Gold member Frank Hollingsworth of Elkins, Pennsylvania. And he's searching for Tyrrell or Tyrrell with two L's and two R's doubled up there or just with one R. Different ways of spelling name. And in some people, you might find it in records instead of being spelled T-Y-R-E-L-L. It could be T-I-R-E-L-L -L, just because that's the way it is with all Irish family names. And he's looking for the Tyrrell family, particularly before 1800. And Frank, I wanted to let you know, thanks for joining up. And your County Wexford genealogy notes are on the way. And I think, well, who else deserves special mention here? Here we've got three folks from the UK that ordered. Uh, Andrew Winnett of London, England. Your Kildare book's on the way. Margaret Bailey of Manchester, England. Your book is on the way. And David Crawford Cummings of Watford in the UK, your county Antrim book has shipped. And let, oh, here's Jenny Martin of New Zealand. Your place names and Keating's Irish genealogies have shipped. And guess what? The shipping was less than it usually was. The postmaster might have pressed the wrong button on that, but it looks like I got a $10 uh, credit on that. So you might have that coming. Just let me know. We'll get that together and uh, make an adjustment for you. And we've just got time for one more. Charlene L. Pinkowski of York, Pennsylvania. Your Irish family's book and the Armagh and Down County books have shipped. And that reminds me to say thank you to all of our members because without you, these three pot <coughs> our podcasts, all three of them, wouldn't be possible. And... Uh, Yes, we do take donations, and sponsors are welcome. Let's move down to our mailbag and see what people have been uh, sending me in the email. You know, most of that mail comes in the email now. It used to be when I first started up back in 1980, everything came in through the mail. It was a real treat to go down to the post office in the morning and open it up to see what letters or what orders I might have for the books, and uh, it became a... A really uh, nice little habit getting up in the morning, going down there and seeing what presents I might have in that post office box. But anymore, it all comes through the email. That's that's just a really big change in the last 25 years. It's, uh, it's amazing, really, how quick things like that happen. But here's the email bag notes I've got. And uh, here's a note from Mike Ferraher from the CelticLounge.com. And that's a new, new space on the web. It's sort of like a MySpace for the Celtic nations of the world, a Mac space, he says. And he's the staff music writer for the Irish Voice here in the U.S. And he started this site with Larry Kerwin, a musician who runs uh, Black 47 in New York City and also hosts the Celtic Crush, which is the only Celtic show on Sirius Satellite Radio. So if you're on Sirius Satellite Radio... Uh, there's a Celtic program for you, sure to be full of Irish things. And it says we've got a number of new things we've developed on the site, including social networking, Celtic Lounge Radio, and Celtic Pulse. Hmm, with a lot of writers who create content, and it's sort of an e-magazine. So if you're understanding what e-magazines are yet, that's a place to go to just to have a little read to see what's up. Well, I thank Mike for that, and we got to talking uh, via email, and 
he took some of my information down and said he might put a little bit in the uh, Irish voice so then put a little bit up on the site. So that's pretty good. Maybe uh, some family researchers will read that and then come over here and help us find our ancestors. We all have to work together like that, you know. And let me see the Kalali family. I wonder if I'm spelling that right. Kalali, Kalali, Killali. Killily, maybe that's the per correct accent, Killily. But we're talking about the Killily family in Germany. I've got an email, and he writes that he's German, and he's searching for a man with the surname of Killily or Killali, and he came from Ireland and studied mineralogy in Göttingen, Germany, at around 1830. And he's uh, really interested in finding him, and... He's uh, looked quite a bit in it with some research, and his great-great-grandfather, he's got some information on, and he's looking for any ideas or sources that are possible. I'll have a full uh, copy of that email on the blog, so you can take a look if you've got any inkling of maybe being related or being able to help him. He sure is serious in, in looking for this, and he said that... Uh, if he passes away, he'll be the last of the name, last of the family in Germany. So that's a real important document documentation there. He said that uh, he's the only Kalali in Germany, and his father died in 1990, and his last grandfather in 1973, and there's no sibling or children. So, and he says, if one day I'll die, the name Kalali will die too. Well, let's hope you never die now. We'll be praying for you. And he's also got a little report, a URL, an address on the web for a report about the first Kalali in Germany. So I'll have that on the web too. That sounds pretty interesting. I'm going to look that one up myself. And let me see. Lastly here, we've got a note. A gentleman called in. He used that phone number out of the tens of thousands of people listening he actually called in. This is the way you're supposed to do it when you've got a tip or you, you want to uh, find your family. You might as well put it out in front of everybody and maybe you get some help. So we're going to play a note now on a gentleman searching for Griffin in Australia. And he's calling for your helps that out there down under. So give a listen if you can. Hi, Michael. This is Rich Rasnick in Easton, PA. And I was hoping that a story my dad told me about my great-grandfather, John Griffin, might ring a bell with one of your Australian listeners. Anyway, the story goes that John Griffin was a very popular hotel porter in the early 1900s in New York City. He was so popular that a Griffin relative in Australia knew someone who was going to visit New York City, and he gave the person a letter and said, when you get there, please find my cousin John Griffin and give him this. Somehow this person found my great-grandfather and gave him the letter. Supposedly this Griffin that lived in Australia owned a huge farm or ranch that was over 100 miles long. I'm wondering if anyone in Australia knows of this Griffin family. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye-bye. Well, thanks a lot for leaving that message. I hope we can scare up some information for you. And that's just a reminder to everybody else who's out there looking to call 816-256-3360 and leave your family search, your order, or ask a question I might be able to answer. It'll automatically be recorded on my recorder, and uh, we'll take care of it from there. I think it's time to move on to the Irish family name of the week, and that's going to be Kavanaugh. And today's family history name is in honor of our member Ellen G. Knapp of Bennington, Vermont. And I think we'll be covering Young in our next episode, but for today, the Kavanaugh's have the floor. And, of course, you can already guess there's many, many ways to spell the name. I'll have them listed on our blog. And it can begin with a C or it can begin with a K. And the end of the name can be just simply A-G-H or it can be simply A or A-U-G-H. All three endings, same name, same family at times. And there's some related spellings you might not notice at first like Keevan or Coveney or Cavana. It rhymes with Havana, but it's got nothing to do with Havana. And it's in variant spelling groups number 261, 262, 972, and 2143 in the uh, Master Guide to the Spelling of Irish Family Names. And here we go, the history of the name. 
The Kavanaugh name is the 53rd most popular name in Ireland. And the family descends from the McMurrow line, the first of the name being Donald Kavanaugh, son of Dermot McMurrow. And Donald's father, the King of Leinster, helped start the Norman invasions of the 12th century. That's through his daughter and Strongbow, but we won't talk about that. Those were, those were troubled times indeed. And, uh, of course, there's more than one origin for the name in Ireland, and there's a lot of different spellings. Uh, the McMurrows were the kings of Leinster prior to the Norman invasions, and they remain prominent as the Kavanaugh's uh, came to the fore in history, and they held the lands of Hugh Kavanaugh, or We Kavanaugh, and now the barony of Idrone East in County Carlow, according to Keating's history. And they were barons of Ballyon, and their original territory was in Carlow and Wexford, as they give it in Keating's history. Now, you also see that Enniscorthy Castle there was a castle that served as a center for the name, and in modern times, it's been a museum. So you definitely want to stop by there if you're a Kavanaugh, and well, even if you're not. Uh, if you're a McMurrow, that'd be good. Uh, what else do we have? Roscommon, Wexford, Kilkenny, Carlo, and Kildare. Uh, you're going to find a lot of the the family in the 17th century. And later on in the 1890 birth index, you see that Dublin, Wexford, and Wicklow uh, were centers for the name at that time. So they moved around a little, but you're going to see them in, in a lot of their traditional old territories for a long time. Uh, Keating's history found the name was anglicized to O'Keevan or O'Keevan and O'Cavanaugh as, as a senior branch of the O'Dowd family and they were chiefs on the borderlands of Sligo and Mayo. That was a separate family from the earlier family we talked about, and their spelling shows that in a lot of instances, too. Now, Art McMurrow O. Cavanaugh, who fought the English in the 14th century, is a noted figure in Irish history. And Donald O. Cavanaugh, surnamed Spagna, or the Spaniard, was another leader who fought against Queen Elizabeth. And Kavanaugh, K-A-V-A-N-A-G-H, is the most common spelling of the name today, but I tell you what, two or three generations ago, you might have spelled it with a C, so don't get too hung up on that if you're researching in the old records. <laughs> and all that was taken from the Book of Irish Families, Great and Small. That's our reference source. That's a, one of the first big books I put together back uh, Gosh, that's been 20 or 30 years ago. It's amazing. Now we're going to see the Irish Book of Arms. What does that show? And it does show a Kavanaugh, and they spell it with a K, and that's Kavanaugh of Boris County Carlow. And that was documented about 1900 A.D. It's illustrated in the Irish Book of Arms. And where, did we, where else did we find a name? If you go to the web page and you use our free surname search, it's going to turn up several of the books that it, the name uh, appears in. Can't mention them all here, but it tells you things like the names found in the 1659 census and the 1890 birth index, spelled with a C at the beginning. And you can find both Mac Cavanaugh and O. Cavanaugh in several resources, even though they say that the name, uh, especially that first family, they say that name really was started as sort of an epithet, and there's really not supposed to be an O or a Mac before that one. Uh, and here, Captain Maurice Cavanaugh, a mariner, is found in the Journal of the Irish American Historical Society, and several of the names are found in the uh, Annals of Ireland by the Four Masters, uh, the Connellan translation, and Counties Kildare, Wicklow, and Carlow, uh, genealogy books, those county genealogy books, they're found in uh, all of those, plus a whole lot more. So there's no trouble finding information. It's just finding the information with your particular family in it or your particular county so you can narrow down the search. Let me, what are we going to do now? Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. Web page of the day. That's a good idea. Let's stick with uh, County Galway, and we're going to make it a genealogylinks.net is the website of the day and i'll have a clickable link on our blog so you can just click it and go there if you're interested in uh, 
some Galway connections and just do a quick little click or two on a couple of uh, resources and see if it turns something up for you. Let me see. What else? We're going to have curious news and notes. If you're researching in County Leitrim in Ireland, uh, you know that uh, sometimes it's hard to get some information on Leitrim. There's not a lot published on it compared to other uh, counties. And now I just got an email and it says that all the available sources are gathered together in one place and the Leitrim Genealogy Center and the Leitrim County Library have combined for a full-time professional genealogy service for Leitrim. And that's in Ballinmore, Ballinamore County Leitrim, the Leitrim Genealogy Center. And we'll have the uh, telephone number and email on the blog. One more note, hey, let's talk a little bit about maps before we wind this up. The Newberry Library in Chicago have just added an online map service that can be real helpful if you're researching in areas of Chicago right down to a certain street corner or what businesses or houses might have been uh, right where your ancestors lived. And it'd be really good for putting together a family history, adding a little color to the bones, if you know what I mean. Now, that New Newberry Library, they've got a world-class collection of books and research aids, and that includes Ireland. So if you're in the area, they're definitely worth checking out there. And they're at newberry.org and at 60 West Walton Street in Chicago, Illinois, 60610. And before we finish up on maps, I got a little note uh, from Family Tree DNA, and they've announced my map. And they, uh, they previewed a prototype of what they've developed. And it's saying that those who have on their DNA on file with Family Tree DNA, that customers will be able to see the ancestral location of their family matches on a map. So if other folks have matched up to you, it'll show you where they're at uh, in, in, a, in a physical location. That could be interested in tracing the family back in history, too. Hmm, and it'll be... It says that it'll, it'll help those trying to make an, a connection to the ancestral homeland. Well, that's pretty good. Of course, you have to have your DNA tested, and you have to uh, enter the locations for the oldest known ancestor in your family before they can be compared to others. Well, that's pretty good. Family tree and DNA is still uh, making some things happen, so let's hope it just continues on. Oh, let me see. No time for events this week. We've got just about everything we can handle so far. Please do remember to send your books, music, or family search to me here at the Irish Roots Cafe by email, uh, by going to the webpage, or by mail to our American address, the Irish Roots Cafe, Box 7575, Kansas City, Missouri, 64116. This is Michael Laughlin at the Irish Roots Cafe signing off. Be sure to come see us in the next weeks. And next week uh, on one of our, our three podcasts, boy, this is getting crazy. I might have to narrow it back down to back down to two. I don't know. Or maybe combine them all into one. And it gets sort of confusing. Well, go listen to them all and see what you think. Oh, yeah. And don't forget to read the blog that goes with the podcast. I've got extra information in there. Love and to get remember. comments for the show. Members foot the bill. So they get first priority, but we're open to all. And by the way, a big thank you to all of our members. And away. <laughs> <laughs>